Hi, this is Rev from Hunters and Farms. Today, if you come out closer, we're, we're going to show you a little bit about building confidence in your puppy. We just fed Julia. This is Julia. So we don't use a collar. We use a loop lead. And we take her for a walk. But we don't try to make her heal. We don't try to make her do any disciplinary. The only thing we're trying to do is keep her on a sidewalk and let her enjoy herself and do what we call an adventure. So here we go out on the evening adventure. This is done in the morning after the first feeding and done in the evening after the second feeding. Same exact time every day. puppy at this, what, 10 weeks old? Just let her be a puppy. This is the first time mommy's been following her, so she's not walking normally. And the main thing is let her go out in, on an adventure. So as far as trying to make her heal perfectly and sit and down, None of these things are necessary. Now on the YouTube, we've noticed there's lots of videos of people training 10 week old puppies, which to me I find ridiculous. And, and, and at this age, it's time to build your relationship with your puppy, build your confidence with your puppy. You're at two minutes. Let your puppy. That? You're at two minutes and twenty. Okay. So at this point, we're just going to work with the the puppy walking and having a little adventure, trying to always keep it on the sidewalk because everything we're doing right now is going to build the foundation for the puppy for the rest of its life. If you can find something like this, this is a great place to teach it to walk on a lead. If you'll stand over here, she'll quit trying to come up. Come on. Okay. Normally I do this on the way back. She she knows what we're doing. Okay, I always let her come up by herself. When we go back on our adventure. You notice there's no heel, heel, no heel, heel. And it's just let her free walk. And while you're doing this, instead of commanding her to heal and commanding her to do this and do that, you're letting her look around and observe and she's getting more mental exercise out of this than anything else. Believe it or not, this puppy goes on these adventures twice a day after eating. The rest of the time she spends in her crate growing. We have no problems with her biting of the hands because we don't allow it. You notice we're not going on the street. No matter where we go, even though we're not making her walk perfectly by the side, we keep her on a sidewalk. Unless there is no sidewalk. Now here's where we find obstacles. This is the back of an of a elementary school. And these are the coolants. So if you'll stand right there, you'll hear the noise from this machine. So we bring her over here by the noise. So we convince her that the noise is okay. So we bring her up on the noise. And let's see if we can get her to sit. 
on top of the machine that's actually hot and vibrating and making noise. Come a little closer, they can hear the noise. And not be scared, see? She's being calm, she's not jumping off. We're actually sitting on her, uh, whatever these things are, radiators that cool off the refrigerators for the elementary school. We're building her confidence in us that no matter what we do, we're gonna keep her safe. Hoping in the future, she's gonna do that for us. She's gonna keep us safe. So if she learns now that she can trust us in anything we do, in the future when it's time to teach her to sit down, heel, wear a collar, and do different tricks, it will be easy. Right now, she's not going to comprehend these things. So the basic thing you should be working on is your confidence with the dog. And when I said confidence and responsibility on the title, the responsibility is your responsibility doing this. Now here we go again. We're back off on another adventure. Now, I noticed on YouTube a lot of the people that are trying to train 10-week-old puppies to do things dogs shouldn't even start being trained to do until they're six months old with uh, steps and different types of obstacles you would have to go out and buy at some type of store and spend a lot of money on. You put the camera over here and every elementary school you'll find jungle gyms. What could be better in the world to work your puppy to build its, its confidence in you and confidence in itself? So we're going to approach the jungle gym. You notice I just let her work with the lead and be comfortable. Now mind you, look at the weight and the size of this dog. This dog has never ate more than twice a day for all of you that are feeding your dog three times a day because some doctor or somebody's told you you have to feed him three times a day. Her weight is 24 pounds. Three times a day she would be overweight. Now, look at this jungle gym. Now, if I can get her to go up to the top of this jungle gym, I would say we're building a little confidence. And guess what? I didn't pay a dime for this jungle gym. Well, what are we doing? Now, the problem with the jungle, jungle gyms is the adult might not be able to get up it. In my case. <laughs> Can Julia? Come on, sweetheart. Come on, Julia. Come on, Julia. Come on, Julia. You got her? Come on, Julia. Who's a good girl? Who's a good girl? That's a good girl. Can we get up to the top of the jungle gym? Oh, Julia. And now, we sit at the jungle gym, and we sit up here with her. We tell her she's a good girl. And she looks at mom, and she's all proud of herself. She's did a great accomplishment here. Excellent accomplishment. And notice we're up high. Look around. This gives her the mental exercise. Look over there on the track. There's some people walking. There's things going on for her to look at. So what we're doing is we're building confidence in the puppy. Confidence that I'm not gonna do anything to her that's gonna hurt her and she can do anything. Look at her, she's gonna lead me down the jungle gym. Look at this, look at this little puppy. Mastering the jungle gym. I almost broke my neck the other day on this thing. Be careful. It's She's a good girl. Come on. It's dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Not recommended for senior citizens. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I think that's why they're in elementary school. <laughs> Another thing I like to do is I like elevated places for building confidence. And she's trying to show off a little bit now because she's accomplished something by 
by the way, that is our third trip to the jungle gym. That's how far she's come with it. Three tries. So a bench is a great place. At this point, she's too young to get up on it herself. Maybe. Let's see. Yes. So I go ahead and help her up. I don't try to force her on it. I help her up. And what I do is I, I get her used to being up on high places. This is mentally exercising the puppy. And what I do is I walk around. And she's sniffing, she's looking around. And her mind's going 90 miles per hour. For a puppy, that mental exercise is worth more than an hour of walking. 15 minutes of this. Twice a day. How long's it been? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. We're probably gonna wrap this session up in fifteen minutes. I've never timed it before because I haven't filmed it, but this is what we do every day after each meal. Now, when it comes to coming off, I think she's ready to come off herself. Come on, Julia. They're good girl. Good girl. So little by little we teach her things. Now we're gonna head back. And notice the the, the 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 lead. We're not we're not trying to make her get completely by her side. By my side, that is. I would like her to. I'd like her to stay on my left side, heel, and walk like a show dog. But she's a little tiny puppy. Let her be a puppy. Let the puppy grow up. These people training ten-week-old puppies. Like they're getting them ready for an AKC show, are blowing the whole concept of raising a dog, especially a hound. I don't know if you notice on YouTube or not, you see all those trainers. Uh, and I've been very ill the last couple of weeks. So I spent the t uh, watching the YouTube to see what I could see that y'all would be referencing to on YouTube. And I noticed one thing about all these trainers. I didn't see any of them with basset hounds, bloodhounds, Rhodesian Ridgebacks, or any other type of hounds. They were training uh, basically terriers. And you, you, you can teach a terrier to do anything. And by the way, anybody can be a trainer. There's no licensing or regulation on it. So all the trainers you see on TV, on YouTube, they're no different than you, and they're no different than me. They're dog owners. Some of them have just spent a lot of time with dogs and have learned that they, they have a uh, ability to understand dogs, and dogs understand them, and they love their dogs, and dogs love you, and if you spend time with your dog, it will do whatever you want it to. Have you noticed something? There's no bag with treats in it. I, yeah. This comes from a, a uh, feed store. It's a lead for horses. It's got a nice comfortable loop on it. If she gets out of control and she starts biting the lead, you take it, you wrap it around her like this, and you push it through here and you make it a little more strenuous on her, make a little halter out of it. And there's your your harness. Boy, that cost me a lot of money right there, didn't it? <laughs> I just turned my horse lead into a harness. So, now we're gonna get back up to this one. Once again, I try for elevations. Why? Confidence. So here, we're gonna walk a little bit up here. Okay. You notice I'm I'm holding her in a show walk style, but you might try to pull this up closer to the, the, the back of the ear. And when you see she's getting bored with the little exercise you're doing, what do you do? Let her off. Here we're headed back towards the house. We're almost finished with the exercise. So 
So, lesson number one we're giving today. My health hasn't been too well. It's a little rough on me, but I have promised some of you folks that I was going to do this. Somebody told me there was a way that you could make money with videos, and I thought I could get some extra money and have a helper that could do things. It's not as easy as he told me. I'm not about to put myself through all that just for this. So, let's get back on the sidewalk. If you, do, if you see she's doing great, it's fantastic. What you're seeing here is, is nothing more than you could want from a puppy. This is a puppy. And she's got the little trophy in her mouth. She's carrying it with her. It's a little leaf, you know. You, everybody's going through the same thing. And there's a, another leaf. She's thinking about two trophies to bring home. <laughs> we keep her on the sidewalk. We try to keep her on our left side. But if she varies off the left side, that's okay for the meantime. The idea is, can we walk her on a leaf? I would say at her age, she's doing extremely well. So every time she comes out of the cattle in the morning and the evening, we're going to take her on an event. Was that? <laughs> That's a good girl. Come on. Heal. We throw the word in heal every once in a while, but it's not like we trying to push this on her. But believe me, she's going to remember everything I'm doing with her for the rest of her life. And let her just do a little wandering on her own. Here, come around here. I'll come in the check. Uh, can you get over here to where the camera's up in the sun? Mm hmm. You're doing well? Mm hmm. Here, you can get these signs. They're cute. <laughs> can you? No, no, no. That, that one's not so cute. <laughs> little sign we put up there. You can find these on the internet. Kind of cute. Everybody that's been out here has seen them. Okay. You, so, how, how many minutes we got? 18. So, there's an 18 minute exercise. And as you see now, the puppy's just wandering around in the yard, out observing things and, and looking at things and having a little free time off the, the lead. This is a horse lead. I've made a loop here, and that's what was around the puppy's neck. Me, myself, I don't believe in putting a collar on a puppy until they're usually around six months old. At six months old, we start getting into more serious training. Up until then, they don't really understand what, what you're trying to do with them. So you want them to develop in their mind to an age where they're old enough to at least understand that you're trying to teach them to do things. So if we gradually ease into the situation, let the puppy be a puppy and also walk it, exercise it in the same places we're going to walk and exercise it while we're training it, it will be much easier. Remember, build confidence in the dog. Have the dog have confidence in you. You have confidence in the dog and your responsibility. Me, myself, this is done twice a day. The rest of the time, she spends in her crate sleeping, playing with her toys. When she wants to go to the bathroom, she lets me know. And at this point, it's about every four hours. It started about every two hours. And we let her outside. If she uses the bathroom, she comes back in. She might play with the other dogs for a little bit. Back in the crate again. Right now, we're trying to establish a regiment. We do everything at the same exact 
time every day. If you start on these simple foundations, you will find when it comes time to start teaching your dog to do all these tricks that you're seeing on YouTube that they tell you to spend so much time so the dog gets it right, the Rhodesia Ridgeback will learn it in two days and will be ready for the next trick. Thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on uh, Rhodesian Ridgebacks at Hunterson Farms. God bless everybody.